Okay, well, let's say we're happy with this fractal. What you want to do when you're done with the image is, first of all, you probably want to go to File, Save Parameters, and um, you want to save somewhere on your computer, like I just put it on the desktop. So just call this something like um, My Flames. So what a flame file is, you actually, it can actually store multiple fractals in one flame file. This is for saving the different settings that make up the fractal, so you can open it back up later and edit the settings more if you want. So what we do is just save these settings, and we call this like first. This is the name of our flame file, which will hold all of our fractals that, well, as many fractals as you want, potentially. And this is the name of the specific fractal that we just made here. So we save that. You can go to open and go to where I saved on my desktop and you have your, your flames, you open that up and you'll get a list right here which will show all the fractals in that flame file and right now we just have this one called first. So then if you want you can make changes to this fractal and change these settings around and things and then um, save this as another fractal in the same file. So you can click the save button right here and just call this like second or something. And so now we have two fractals in this flame file, the first one that we made and the second one we just made. So let's say we want to actually save one of these fractals. So I click back on the first one and we want to render it as an image so we can use it in GIMP and other programs or on our desktop wallpaper. The way you do that is you click on this button right here that looks kind of like a gear. That's the render button. So what you want, need to do is choose a location to save the image on your computer. I just have it set to my desktop, and it should automatically put in the name of what your fractal was called over here first, and it should probably ha end in a .png. If it doesn't have .png, you should change it to that if you want the better quality. The quality setting will affect how, basically how grainy or smooth your image is, so the higher it is, the better, but it'll also take longer to render it. Probably the biggest value they have in this list right here is 4,000. You should definitely probably go for at least 4,000. If you want, you can type in something even higher, like 6,000. Whoops. I clicked Enter, so it started the rendering process, but I didn't want to do that yet. But probably 4,000 is good enough. If that doesn't turn out good enough when you render it, you could try it even higher. Most of these other settings I don't play around with too much. Um, obviously, over here, you'll need to change this to whatever size you want your image to be. So if you want to use it for like a desktop wallpaper, like for example, my desktop is 1280 by 800, so I can enter those in, in there. And then basically, you just click render. And once it starts rendering, it shows it's rendering a size 1280 by 800, 4000 quality. It shows what it's doing. And then it starts rendering it, and it tells you it's going to take about nine minutes to render this image. So this is a really simple fractal, and it's still taking nine minutes to create the full image. Um, I've heard of other people who made fractals that took like a couple hours overnight. To render the whole thing. So it depends a lot on how big it is, how many transforms you have your image and different settings you use. Um, like this is a really simple example so it's not going to take very long but I'm not going to sit here obviously and wait for the whole thing to render. Uh, but I'll probably go ahead and stop the video and show you the result when it's done rendering. Hey guys another important thing I forgot to mention uh, before you actually render your fractal you should go to options, options, and go to this general tab and click on multi-threading. If your computer's processor is like a dual core or quad core, you should change this value to a two or four depending on how many cores your computer has. Um, for example, mine's an Intel Core 2 Duo, so that means it has two processors inside of it, um, dual core processor. So if I click on two, then, that, then when it renders the fractal, it'll actually go a lot faster because it takes advantage of the fact that my computer is running a dual core processor. So, um, actually, after I stopped the video just a second ago, I stopped rendering the fractal, went back and changed this to 2, and started rendering it again, and the time was basically cut in half from approximately 9 minutes to render the fractal to only about 4.5 minutes once I turned on multi-threading. So you should definitely check that out. If you're not sure whether your computer is like a dual core or a single core or a quad core or whatever, um, don't worry about it. You just leave it set on none or whatever it is off. It still won't take that long to render your images, but uh, if you know that you have like a dual core or a quad core or something like that, you should definitely 
change this value to take advantage of that um, and your fractals will render much quicker. Just click OK and then render it the same way I showed before. So I already went ahead and rendered my this fractal right here. Um, this is what it is over here on my desktop. So I'll go ahead and show you that, open it up in GIMP. Actually, I can just drag it onto the GIMP icon and it'll automatically open in GIMP. And we can take a look at what this fractal image looks like. So it should have a transparent background by default if you saved it as a PNG image. So what I usually do is just uh, switch the foreground and background colors. So the background color is black. And you can right click on this and choose remove alpha channel. And that will automatically fill the background with black essentially. So this is what the fractal looks like. Zoom in a little bit so you can see more detail. So you can see it looks pretty cool. It's very colorful. It's got this nice... Um, kind of texture to it. Probably if I was going to render this again, I would probably try bumping up the quality even higher than 4000, which might add a little bit more detail to it. But you can kind of see if you zoom in, it's a little kind of grainy looking. Um, it would probably look even better if the quality was more like 6000, 7000, maybe even 10,000. Of course, that would make it longer to render, but this is still a pretty good result for um, only taking about four and a half minutes to render this fractal. So yeah, you can use this design for a desktop wallpaper, like I said, or you could use it for a background of your YouTube channel, or for a texture or effects in your signature, for your form signature. Yeah, it's a really cool program. You guys should definitely check it out. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and I'll see you next time.